This video is going to have a look at an example of an adjacency matrix where we are creating a matrix from a diagram and then using it to answer some questions. An adjacency matrix allows us to represent the number of connections between two objects. Go and have a look at the video introducing adjacency matrices if you need more information on what they are or how we can create an adjacency matrix. So in the example, we are provided with a network diagram that has lines showing who of the four people have met. And we've got A, B, C, and D representing the four people. And it's asking us to do a few things. The first is represent the graph using a matrix. And we've been told that zero is going to be when the two people have not met and one is where they have met. So having a look at that, my matrix to represent those four people is going to have an order of four times four. So it's going to have four rows and four columns. So I'm going to start off by preparing an outline for that matrix. And before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and add my labels. So A, B, C, and D, A, B, C, and D. Now that is going to help me to complete that matrix. Now the people can't meet themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and add in zeros diagonally down to block out all of those combinations where people are meeting themselves. So after I have done that, I can go ahead and start preparing my matrix. And to do that, I need to have a look at all my connections. And I'm going to start with person A or object A, and I'm going to see who they have met or who their connections are. So I can see that A has made a connection with B, and A has also made a connection with D. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in to my matrix. So A has one connection with B. It has no connection with C because there's no lines joining A to C and then one connection for A to D. So moving on to person B, I can see that person B has a connection with A, they have a connection with D and they also have a connection with C. So they're connected to all three other people. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete that row adding in the ones. Now I can move on to person C and I can see that person C only has one connection and that is with person B. So they don't have any connection to person A and person D. So when I'm going ahead and completing their row, they're gonna have zero connection to person A, one connection to person B and zero connection to person D. And now all that is left is for me to go ahead and complete my row D. So looking at object D, I can see that they're connected with object B and they're also connected with object A, but there's no connection to object C. So D and A are connected, D and B are connected, but D and C are not connected. So that gives me my adjacency matrix for the network diagram shown. So that completes part A of the question. Part B asks us how to use the matrix to be able to tell who has met the most people. Now to determine how many people each of them has met, what we do is we go ahead and add up the rows. So person A, we can see has met two people. Person B has met three people. Person C has met one person and person D has met two people. So we can see that person B has met the most number of people. And if I go and have a look at my diagram, I can see those three connections are the three lines that are going from B to other objects within the network diagram. So that confirms my answer that I obtained from the adjacency matrix. Now we can also use the same information to see who has met the least number of people. So looking at our total meets, we can see that person C has only met one person. So the person with the least number of meets, it's going to be person C. And again, we can check that on the network diagram and we can see that person C has only met person B. So that is only one connection. So that is an example of how we can use an adjacency matrix to be able to answer some questions based on a network diagram.